Maddie Matheson, welcome to the show. Hey, what's up? Good to be here. Nice to see you. Where are you again? I'm in uh, Ridgeway, Ontario. You're living the rural Canadian life. That's it, man. You know, I, 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 I you know, I got business in the city, and I, and I live in a small town, so it's uh, kind of ideal, you know. You've been helping me out a lot because I've been watching. Um, you've been helping me out a lot because I've been learning how to cook during yeah. this time a little bit more. I feel like every time I talk to you, I'm trying something new. Last time I talked to you, I had cooked a Thanksgiving turkey. This time, I'm trying to fry chicken by using your video about fried chicken. That'll help you. That'll help you. It's terrifying. Cooking with oil at home, I'm, yeah. Cooking with oil at home is very, um, could be very dangerous. <laughs> Even for me, I the other day, I, I had like a little bit of a little flash fire in the house. I was like cooking, and it was a nice day, and the kids were playing outside. I turned on something. I was going to like shallow fry some like crispy potatoes and I went outside for a second. All of a sudden there was like a little bit of fire, I had to run inside and, you know, take care of that before it got a little crazy. But, um, you know, yeah. The, the word in my house is that like, this is not the time for the house to catch on fire. No, you don't. That is, that's a good <laughs> during, during COVID, during the pandemic, please don't, because you need the house before you could kind of, you know, you only needed the house for sleeping, really. And now in the modern day, um, you know, you, you you need the house just to do dishes all day. You know, it's not. Even yeah, that's all. I, it's just it's just dishes. That, that's all I do. All I do is do the dishes all day. If anyone had told me that cooking involved this much dish doing, I never would have signed up for any of it. Man, it is it is a um, humbling experience you know like just the amount of dishes like even to do what we're about to do right now we got half a load we got a full we got a full load half a load going here on dishes you know it's just i'm looking forward i'm really looking forward to doing all the dishes after I, we uh have some fun <laughs> i also made your pancakes the pancakes they make everyone's life better cooking the thing about it is like everything that i've kind of tried to do in my weird kind of way is is, is you know i just want people to cook i want people to have the building blocks and and now is such an amazing time to really connect like the amount of people that are making sourdough bread everyone's like got a starter going and everyone's making bread and it's just like it's such an amazing thing to see you know, like every single person is going live and every single chef is now cooking, has their own cooking show at their house. And it's like, but at, at the real thing of it, like everyone, you, you, you need shelter, you need food and, and, and you need the government to come through with a couple bucks right now, you know? And it's just like, I think that, um, you know, I'm really excited and I hope that people continue to cook, um, you know, as much as they are right now, even, you know, it's really inspiring actually. What have you been cooking at home? I've been cooking pretty much a lot. I've been cooking a lot of stuff. I cook kanji. I cook kanji a lot. We make a lot of tacos because we do kind of tacos with leftovers. So if, like, you know, Issa was the other day. We chop up all the leftover lamb. We had some la made some lamb tacos. Um, you can kind of make tacos out of any kind of protein or add make any kinds of salsas you got and all that kind of stuff. So I think that... Um, you know, and I'm making kind of like a lot of kanji, a lot of tacos, and we're making a lot of just like meat and potatoes. Like we're making a lot of meat and potatoes. And I think that like that in itself is, is as simple as possible. Like for, for, for Easter, it was like I smoked a leg of lamb. I made some mashed rutabaga, some freezer peas, and some mashed potatoes and gravy. And it's just like I'm trying to like – do some like, because as a I'm like, I don't need to show off to myself. So I'm not trying to do these extravagant, crazy meals. I'm trying to like low impact. And like, I, I'm just trying to make like the most delicious food with the least amount of impact and time because, you know, with two kids running around it's, and, and trying to run your business from your AirPods out in the middle of the woods, you don't really have that much time. So I'm just trying to like make a meat and potatoes kind of thing, three, four ingredients at the most. And, um, you know, I'm just every day, you know, this morning we had, uh, toasted bagels with avocado, some bacon and some fried eggs, you know, we're just cooking whatever. It's amazing. I, I had whatever was left of the crispix with whatever was left of the mini wheats in one bowl. 
half water, half milk, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just table cream. <laughs> Whatever some 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 three days expired table cream. What do you think the impact is going to be on the restaurant industry coming out of this thing? Well, <laughs> I think that it the impact of of this pandemic on the restaurant industry in Canada is is going to is going to be rough. I think I think um you know there's a massive trickle down effect of shutting down an entire industry um you know with suppliers from 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 you know linens garbage um you know meat suppliers vegetable suppliers farmers and all of a sudden everything's been halted to such a small 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 percentage and to come back from that is going to be very is going to be very hard where you know like there needs like all the stuff about like rent and freezing um you know mortgage freezing all this kind there's so much there's so much um homework to do on everyone's behalf and you know the government's trying um you know they're trying they've never had this happen so you know i'm taking everything with like a grain of salt i'm i'm building a restaurant right now and then i got you know, like I'm building a restaurant. I'm not even open, but it's like I'm in a position where I'm going to be able to still hit the ground running, whereas people have already put in so much to the restaurants. And then to start up a new restaurant again, to hire, to to train, to buy product. Um, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, just restaurants magically open again. It, it's like, how how do you open up? 15 restaurants at once for for larger restaurants like you know like even like OMB you know like in Toronto like how how, how do you they laid off 3000 like around like 3000 employees how how do you just magically reopen that's going to take years to reopen those concepts that have been there for years and 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 it's just it's really scary and it's like people aren't just going to be able oh oh thanks we can go back to work it's like okay we can go back to work and in in, in 3 months maybe we'll be up and 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 how long will it take for that farmer to get us vegetables again or the fisher folk how long will it take them to get us seafood and shellfish like it, it it's like we're going to have to start the world again and, and and our industry is 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 absolutely crippled and and i i don't know like it it, it is a really um kind of scary thing and, and but at the same time you know, life on life's terms, we're going to have to figure this out, good or bad. And we're just going to have to keep moving forward. And we're going to have to reopen our restaurants. And and the thing about it, too, that the wild thing is about occupancy. And is occupancy going to change? Or are we going to? And then if occupancy changes, then that means that real estate has to change. And then if real estate has to change, then are people even going to rent to restaurants because they can't afford the new you know like it's just like what is gonna have to happen to to bring this back not even to normal just just bring yeah. it back and and be like what is the new like everyone is gonna have to bend and and remold and be extremely fluid with what is happening and and all of a sudden people are just like i really hope that it doesn't just turn into delivery food services and, 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 and like, I just, I miss hearing people laughing. I hear people fighting with their boyfriends or girlfriends in public, you know, like I miss, I miss, I miss, uh, you know, the world. And, and, and yeah. I just think that the restaurants are just in a position that were completely crushed. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that though, about the delivery, because that's what we're being encouraged to do is to order delivery as much as we can from local restaurants to um to buy gift cards for like future meals but is there anything we can really do like consumer wise i don't know i'm not like it, it, it's tough to be like to give my opinion on such a grand scheme of the world you know like it, it, it's you know maker pizza our pizza company um you know they're they're delivering and we're taking uh, in, um a lot of precautions even with our staff, we 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 have a van that goes and picks up all of our staff and brings them to the restaurant. So then there's no public transport and 
all that kind of stuff. We're taking, we're, everyone's wearing the gloves and doing everything. Like we're taking so much precautions and it's still just like, it's so nerve wracking to even ask people to do that. And, 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 but we're serving so many pizzas and, and, you know, like to get a pizza in a time where you've been making a tuna melt for like the 16th day in a row is like, it's like you've never been kissed before, you know, and it, it's a feeling you've never felt before. And the, the thing about food for me is that like, I, I want everyone to do whatever they can. If, 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 if the government isn't going to help you 100%, then you're going to have to put yourself in risk at a certain amount of time, you know, with precautions yeah. to make money. I, I don't know yeah. how, how like pe what's more important to 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 give up like we're out we're just we're completely out and 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 it's just like we're gonna have to figure all of this out a lot of people don't even have um massive financial backers or a lot of people took like their last fifty thousand dollars and opened up their own little restaurant and and it's just like those people do they have another fifty thousand dollars can they reopen their restaurant for twenty five thousand dollars who has twenty five thousand dollars who has, you know, like who, it, it, it is, it's 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 just a wild kind of no man's land right now or no, no person's land now. And I think that, that, um, you know, it, 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 it's like, I've been saying, like, even on my Instagram, it's, it's even tough to be as positive as I, as I constantly kind of am on, on social media, because it is like, it's just like, we're in, we're like, I'm just we're in this blackout zone of like, yeah. like, is this, this is the new future? Like all these late night people, like all of a sudden it's just like, okay, late night could be done from your couch. Jimmy Kimmel, Seth, like all these people, Tom, you're the new Canadian, you know, like, okay, then you're the new <laughs> face of Canadian television talk. Like, like this is that. Like That's it, a it, problem. It, if that's yeah. if that's happening, that's a really bad sign for the country. Like it's a bad sign of things to come. If things are like, yeah, Tom, I don't know. Just him. Just try him out. Tom. Tom Cho. P. The P man. I like it. <laughs> but uh, what are you... Let's go to some cooking tips. You said you've been cooking all day in preparation for us. What do you got for us? What's the first thing you want to show us? Well, Tom, let me tell you something. I've been cooking every... Just woke up about 4.30 in the morning, started the stoves up, got some coals going. And, uh, you know, I'm going to show you and the people at home... I think I, I make, I'm going to show you, this is my son's favorite meal. This is, this is, I'm going to make you a seafood kanji. Okay. And I'm not going to okay. make it. I'm just here because we're not here and the Wi-Fi sucks. But so this is a bowl and the easiest thing about kanji. And I don't know if people realize that kanji is just like overcooked uh, rice with like chicken stock or fish stock or vegetable stock or whatever thing. And you just cook, cook, cook rice forever. And then you whisk it. I, I like to just whisk it and whisk it and whisk it and whisk it. And then you just have like a beautiful, like kind of gruel, gruel or porridge or kanji. And, 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 and Mac, my son, he loves it so much because it's just like a bowl of kind of like salty ginger garlic uh, porridge, you know, it's, it's a savory porridge and he loves that. And so just to make a really warm, very quick meal, just box like I'm, I'm a huge like I have stock that I've made at home, but I love using box stock. You know, like box chicken stock yeah. now is amazing. You can keep it in your pantry. You don't have to keep it in the freezer. I use it all the time. So like I don't want there to be these people that are you know snobs about you know using. There's good ingredients out there now, and I think using you know um, anyway box chicken stock is really easy, and you can make beautiful kanji in minutes well not minutes. well can you minutes. show me can you show me i've never seen kanji before can you show me in like the ladle what the kanji looks like or what the bowl looks like yeah so it's just like can you see that yeah i can so see just kind of looks like oatmeal and you can and, and you can make it thinner it's a little bit thicker now because it's been sitting out and it just looks like something out of like oliver twist you know it's a little twi oliver twist can i have some more please sir and, and, and it's just like a little bit of a kanji and, and, and it's just, it's really nice. And it's re the thing about this and during these times is that it is really cheap to make. And you can make it literally right. just with water, rice, crappy garlic, and, and like some old dried ginger that you forgot about. 
So you take that, the water, the rice, it reconstitute those kind of older little flavoring agents. And then, and then you just boil it, you, you whisk it, and you have a beautiful, warm, hearty, stick to your ribs, kind of get up and go morning kind of situation. Then, um, you know, I have some like beautiful uh, ocean wise frozen fresh cod. And so then like, I just take that and I, and I steam it. And so when I'm making the congee, I see this pot, this is going to get, this is going to be great television, by the way, or whatever this is called. So when you're cooking the rice, right. And the liquid, all yeah. the steam's coming up and then you just put a rack, like a little baking rack. You do, you, you rest your cookies on, you put your little cookie yeah. rack on top. And then that steam, that's what cooks your cod. And then you don't have to do too many more dishes because you're steaming your cod and you're steaming. I got some chopped up shrimps here and, and you just, you put a couple shrimps on top, a couple fish, a little fish filet, and you can steam your own cod, frozen cod. And you can get like really beautiful, like ocean wise now in, in a lot of grocery stores and frozen fresh stuff. Um, you can get really high end, um, you know, trustworthy frozen fish nowadays, which is really a beautiful thing. And then the other thing, so I have cod, I have shrimps, I have my congee. And then I like to make, I love um, soy sauce um, marinated eggs. And so this is really easy. You just hard boil an egg for six minutes. So the inside the yolk is really gooey and you can do that really nicely. And then the secret to this is, oh, it smells nice. And, and, you, you, you take that and you do about like, um, you know, 25% soy sauce, 75% water to give that a little stir. And then you just soak your, your eggs overnight and you just have here, I'll do a little. Ooh, yeah. Little section. And you, and you have just like a ooey gooey, beautiful yolky, uh, beautiful yolky. And then you garnish, you can just start garnishing. Cause that's, that's it. So like every morning, MacArthur, my son, Mac, he wants congee. And so like, this is like kind of a really beautiful seafood, warm, delicious kind of meal. And then, and then I just kind of, you put the congee down and then, and then you just build it up and you put your little shrimps in, you got your shrimps and you can take some of your cod and you just break up little flakes of your cod. Oh, Tom, you know it's a thing or two about cod, eh? Oh, I know the old cod, boy. I know the old white fish for sure. <laughs> Though I had to have halibut on fish and chips on Good Friday. I was rotted about it. Oh, it's beautiful. And then I have some, some Japanese white pepper, and I like to put that just a little bit on the cod, just because it's, like, stylistically really cool looking. And then we have this beautiful. old... So this is like, you know, everyone buys like a bunch of green onions or, you know, a bunch of green onions or like old parsley, like parsley, um, herbs go, nobody uses a full bunch of parsley or a full bunch of cilantro or green onions. So the thing about onions is they're very resilient. And so if you pull it out and it's kind of scaly, you literally can just pe peel back like one layer and you're going to be left with a really fresh, look at this, it's like a cocoon. And, and, and it's just like the dry layer of the, of the beautiful green onion. And you can just peel this back with your fingertips and look at this and born. Oh, look at this, Tom, let me tell you something. Look at this. <laughs> All of a sudden you want to take, look at that. It's bright green. It's vibrant. Oh yeah. And then it's all shining through just, your laptop camera, man. It's, 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 it's vivacious. Ooh, the white balance is just fully firing. And, and so like, see this, so then you take this, the scraps, and you could put this in when you're cooking the congee, if you wanted to, you know, a little flavoring, right. Hey, how are you doing? And then you just got to slice up your little green onion. And so that's like a really easy trick. I find like people will just see like an old green onion. They'll just throw it out. It's kind of tethered and gross. It's just like, no, just take it and peel one layer off. And if you peel one thin layer off the green onion, let me tell you you are on your way to having a beautiful brand new green onion. And so I think like that's a really cool trick. And, and then you just put the green onions in the middle. And then the best thing ever is, is this is my favorite thing. This is like my favorite con. See, this, this is like homemade chili oil. And the homemade chili oil, this thing is like, 
This stuff is the good stuff. This is the good stuff, Tom. Let me tell you. How do you make you it? Take, how do you make that? So this is the easiest thing ever, okay? And it's such a big reward. And you take just a container of dried chilies, dried chili flakes, any any brand, whatever. Put them into yeah. a pot. Then add like star anise, some clove, some 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 grated ginger, some grated garlic, and then you heat up vegetable oil about you know if you have say like two cups of dried chilies in a pot in a pot because you want it to be safe in a pot so about two cups a cup of dried chilies then you're going to use two cups of oil it's kind of like one third and and then yeah. you just heat up that oil and you take that hot oil carefully and you pour it over all the good the garlic the ginger the star anise the clove and all the dried chili flakes and you just give that a stir, and it's going to get frothy and bubbly. And you just give that a stir, and it, let it cool down. Once it's cooled down, you have, like, the best chili oil ever. And it has that toasted – you know when you go to every, every, every like, late-night Chinese spot, and it has, like, the little chili oil dish? Like, that's the best chili oil, you know? And this is the yeah. same, same style. This is the same style. So then we just take a little bit of the chili oil, and I like to just put it in one little position – your kid you can, can handle the spice, by the way. Your your kid can do the no. spicy chili oil. No, 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 no. Mac Mac doesn't like anything spicy. No, no, no. I wouldn't put the chili. This is for big dog. This is for me. And then <laughs> let me see. Let like, me see. Can you see it? Can you see that? Oh, it's spilling. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Can you see that? Is the white balance? How's the white balance? That's beautiful. Oh my is god! That, that looks like something out of that's something out of a restaurant. It looks nice, right? Does that look nice? I want to get that on Uber Eats. I, I'm going to set up a kanji cart on Uber Eats, a virtual restaurant, Maddie's kanji, <laughs> little truck. I'm going to serve kanji everywhere I go. I love kanji because I just like this thing right here. You eat this, you got one egg, you got like three little shrimps, got a little piece of cod, you got chicken stock, warm you up, chili, the spice. You can even, you know, a little lime, a little lime on top. Break up that richness of the kanji. You got a little lime right there. And there you go. And it's just like, you know, you can make, you're making, the thing about it is you're really not really doing, I make this every day within like 15 minutes, you know, and I make a big batch of the kanji and then I just put it in the fridge and then I scoop out a couple scoops, add just some tap water and I, I reheat it. And then I, I have breakfast, a beautiful bowl of kanji ready to go. My whole family is eating and we got the soy sauce eggs and you're eating an egg, you got some fish. I don't know. It's a really nice breakfast. A lot of Canadians are not going to like this. The Commonwealth does not really, you know, want to eat this. But it's just, it's a savory seafood porridge, okay? Anybody in, in, in Medicine Hat have a problem with kanji? Let me tell you something. It is seafood porridge, okay? It's going to be good. It's going to be delicious. Maddie, we're going to put a recipe for your kanji online. Uh, what's your next dish you're going to show us? Oh, well, let me tell you something. I am going to show you, and this is a great thing. You know, I was talking earlier about making a lot of tacos. I'm going to show you how I make a really easy taco with leftover. What do I got leftover? I have some leftover. I made uh, some braised beef, just some braised beef. And so the thing about it, I'm going to make braised beef tacos with uh, black refried beans, uh, some flour tortillas, a fresh little salsa, some really old iceberg lettuce from my fridge, and some grated marble cheese. You know, just something that everyone has in their house. Everyone's always got like half a block of like marble cheese. Everyone's always got like a quarter head of iceberg lettuce that's kind of brown. And, you know, and we always somehow have some flour tortillas in our house. So, yeah, I have all of these things in my house right now. I'm literally excited for this just because I have an old, old El Paso taco kit. I have some lettuce I've been trying to get rid of. And I got marble cheese that has not gotten hard yet but i probably have like eight hours when it gets the crit it turns into like a crack it looks like it looks like you're like the bottom of your grandma's heel you know it's like yeah, all exactly. crack. yeah yeah <laughs> so <laughs> the thing shout out to all the grandmas um so the thing that i like to do at home is is, is even with i i have you know um crappy flour tortillas i have like a glass top um uh stove and so what i like to do is I, I turn my stove on like low just so it's warm 
And I put the tortillas right on the glass so that and they kind of puff up and they come back to life. And so I just throw in the bag in the microwave or something like that. And I just put these down on, on the, um, you know, the flat top. And if you got a pan, put them in a pan, whatever. But I like to, you know, you should warm them up in a pan or even if you have a little, um, you know, if you had a little lard, some pork lard, and you want to just like mm -hmm. warm them up a little bit in some pork lard, let me tell you something. Flour tortillas warmed up with pork lard. So this is a really easy thing. So this is, that's my one trick. Heat up your tortillas on, just right on your stove top. Just throw them on your stove top. Even if you got flame, put them over the flame a little bit. Just warm them up. Make sure you, I don't, people eating cold tortillas are, are, are serial killers, you know? So <laughs> this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a tortilla. And then this is just, so this is kind of, this is a really nice thing. So this is, I make um, like citrus refried beans a lot. And so what I do is I, I cook up onions. What's that, Matt? That was my little, my, my boy running by. And love it. Love that he's running by. He's running by. doesn't care. Not a care in the world, that kid. And <laughs> so refried beans, a really easy way to make just a can of refried beans, like extraordinary is cook some onions and some garlic and some olive oil. Then add a couple tablespoons of like Mexican chili powder, a couple tablespoons of cumin. Really simply, if you want some spice, you could add like a jalapeno in there as well. Cook that off really quickly. Throw in your can of beans. Then, let me tell you a secret. Throw in, if you got some like old orange juice or grapefruit juice, Mackie boy, I'm going to run that. <laughs> and so, so he's running. Mackie loves the refried bean. So then you add just a little bit of grapefruit juice or orange juice to your refried beans and they'll, they'll just make it super great. Then once you kind of swirl all that around, get the, the beans all nice, then you take a lot of grated marbled cheese again, if you want, and you throw that in and you make cheesy, beautiful, cheesy, refried black beans. And so that's what I do here. And then what I do here is I'm just going to put the refried beans on the bottom. These have kind of gotten um, room temperature, to say the least, while we were shooting this. So they're not so beautiful. <laughs> so then I like to just put the reef. It looks, you know, a, a, um, a diaper, I guess, a little bit of a diaper. <laughs> And then, and then what we have here is, this is really great. So this is another kind of, so this is braised um, chuck. So this is just So this braised. is just leftover beef you when you had beef for supper? Yeah, like we, I just, I love, I'm a, you know, I love boiled meat. I think it's a really easy, fun, I, I literally will take a, even like a prime rib. I'll take a prime rib, throw it in, cover it in oil, throw in some onions, that's it. And just like simmer it very slowly. And I just love that like salty beef, you know, salt boiled beef. And yeah, I love the, it. The thing about this that I think is amazing is if you cook, like go to the grocery store, you know, and buy a chuck, like a nice piece of chuck, like a pot roast. And you just boil that with just onions, maybe some garlic and some water. Then what you have is a neutral beef product. So then you could have that with tacos. You could have that. You could use that, make a lasagna. You could make beef stroganoff if you wanted to make beef, beef stroganoff. So what I like to do is kind of at the beginning of the week, if I cook one or two larger pieces of meat, I always cook them very neutral. So then I could take it and make it into a curry, a lasagna, Italian, uh, Mexican. I can kind of take it any way I want with the leftovers. So the first you get a, initial you get a blank cook, palette, a blank easel. Of absolutely, beef. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So then, and then I take it, and with the braised beef, uh, this was frozen, and then I just took it, like vac packed it in like a little bag, and then I just warmed it up in some water, and then I just poured it into a pot, and now because of all the other flavorings. I just have a really nice beef product. So that's an easy way too to like kind of stretch out a week. Don't don't start with your initial if you were to take a larger piece of meat, cook that just natural. Then the next time with the leftovers, you can kind of add some spice. And then you can get like two or three meals out of something. But if you start with like say a beef curry, I'm just I'm, I I know he's asking me why it's taking so long. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I'll be done soon. We'll go outside after this, okay, Mac? Okay, okay thanks, buddy.
Oh, you're eating a chocolate chip cookie. Good boy. And see, this is so, good. This is good. I think he's a plane. Yeah, he's good. He's he's coming in. He's coming in hot. <laughs> and so that's the thing. Like, if you were to start off, if you were to take a large chuck roll or so, a larger piece of meat or a whole fish, and you like, I always think like the secondary cooking or something with leftovers is meant for like spicing it up and doing whatever, kind of taking it whichever way you want it to go. Anyway, right. So this beef. So once so you put that on just, the taco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then the braised beef goes on the taco. And then I have such a, a beautiful, you know, I got refried beans on the bottom, right? Refried beans. Then I got some braised, beautiful, fatty braised beef. Then I made a really easy, and this is the easiest thing ever. So this beautiful salsa, this salsa, can you see this salsa? Can you see? You can't really yeah, see. Yeah, I can see. Okay, well, this salsa... Oh boy. So this salsa is such an amazing, it's almost like, like a, like a, a South American, um, like chimichurri almost. And, and so what we do for that is you grate everything. So you grate, you cut your tomatoes in half and you grate your tomatoes in half and you just grate your tomatoes, grate your tomatoes. You take your onion, your garlic, your jalapeno, and you grate everything into a bowl. And then you add a little bit of olive oil, you add some cilantro, you add some dried oregano, um, some lime juice, and a little, yeah, some olive oil. And then all of a sudden you have a very beautiful, very clean kind of salsa that isn't some big chunky, you know, chopped up tomatoes and all that. It's a yeah. very nice, very cohesive. The flavors really, the juice from grating the onion, the garlic, everything kind of comes in. And you get a really nice, almost like a, it almost seems like a cooked salsa, but it's not a cooked salsa. It's a fresh salsa. So once again, if you're putting raw onion into anything, that's only going to last like 24 hours, 48 hours max before it gets too astringent. And then we got some marble cheese, some beautiful, beautiful. it's a beautiful, mar there isn't a greater cheese. And like, where does marble cheese come from? You know, no, I love marble? it. It's my favorite cheese. I just, it's, 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 it's the, it's the finest of all the varieties of cheese. And then what we have, and then I have some sliced, some beautiful sliced iceberg lettuce, and you have yourself a giant, beautiful refried bean taco. And this is, this meal, this is dripping everywhere. This is going to make, make Trisha crazy. And, <laughs> and, and so this is such an easy meal to like, once again, because we've done the work and, and this is the thing about, you know, um, cooking smart throughout the week. If you cook larger pieces of meat, you know, uh, even one piece of meat throughout the week, you can make five different meals. You know, if you, if you take your braised beef and you have your first meal is just beef, turnip, carrot, potatoes, you know, or like, for, for, yeah, I'm a cat pack. Oh my goodness. My son, just, he's done pooping. So I could, I have to go. Trisha. <laughs> Maddie, you're back. Uh, I love in addition to uh, helping us cook, you're also helping out your kid. This is something that parents got to go through right now while they're making dinner. This is the thing, you know, if, if you're, you're like when the CBC calls, you got to answer. And, and when your son sitting on the toilet saying, I need to, you know, wipe his behind, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, we're training them. You know, we're training them. I can't wait. The day that my son can wipe his own bum is going to be a great day for everybody, you know? I just love that I got to see a slice of celebrity chef Matty Madison. <laughs> hey, man, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the same as any other loser out there. Uh, so like, thanks a lot for showing us the taco. Can you show us the taco before we go? Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Maddie, before we go, one last thing. Yeah. Parents who are home right now trying to figure out how to cook for their kids, maybe for the first time ever, what do you recommend? Do you have any wisdom for them? Mackie, they, they just asked me, what, what what's the secret that I could tell parents how to cook for their kids? Dada. Yeah. Who's that guy? Who's that guy? That's Tom Joe. He's on the TV. Hi, Mac. How are you? Hi. <laughs> um, I think 
I think that um, I think the thing about cooking and cooking for children and cooking during these times is is just patience and and trying to I think with everything I think a plan always helps and I think having uh, you know even mental like I don't write it out because I'm I'm an extremely great, I'm like the best home cook in the world, but you know, <laughs> I think about, you know, what I'm going to do throughout the week. And I think people that don't really have ideas should, um, or understand, like I can open up anybody's fridge in the world and make a meal, you know, that's just, that's, I, you know, you could pick up any guitar in the world and play a song. It's just the way that it right. is. It's a trade. Yeah. I have a trade. I'm the world's trade, greatest you. home guitar player. You're the greatest, the world's greatest home guitar player. And this show is just called Best of the Best. And, (laughs) you know, the thing is, is is a plan. And I think planning for for parents to plan out their week. There's three meals in a day. You can maybe skip, you know, you you can't even skip. If you got kids, you can't really even skip a day. Like in the morning, like Mac has congee almost every day. Mac just has like a straight bowl of rice. You know, kanji. Then at lunchtime, we usually probably do sandwiches. You know, nice little sandwiches. Couple. He loves a bologna, so a bologna mm-hmm. sandwich. And then at dinner time, we we have whatever I'm cooking. You know, so but right. I think for parents, a plan and and just like get a little whiteboard, a little weekly seven day thing, and just you know, chicken broccoli, um, you know, chicken broccoli rice. And then who knows what you're gonna do with that rice? Maybe it's a stir fry. Maybe the broccoli is with some chili and some vinegar and whatever. Maybe the chicken is grilled, broiled, stewed, whatever it may be. Um, that's the thing. You can take cooking as such a, you know, it's a note. How many notes are there? You know, there's a million notes. How many colors in the world? But I think, I just think that having a plan is probably the best bet. Per- perfect. Uh, uh, Maddie, thanks for doing this. And, uh, stay safe and, and thanks to Mac too. Hey, thank you guys. Thank you for, you know, um, just keep working, you know, thank you for, for, for keeping strong and giving people some hope. Is Mac there? Can I say goodbye to him? MacArthur, come here. Tom wants to say bye. Come here. Show me, you can show me your football. Come here. Come on. The show, show me your football. Here, come here. Mackie, show me your football. Say, hey Mac, can you say I'm MacArthur Matheson and you're you're watching the CBC? No. <laughs> so, Mac, thanks a lot for lending me your dad for a for for a little while. Mac, here, can you hear me? Mac, thanks so much for lending me your dad. Thanks for doing this. Say thank you. Thank you. Or you say you're welcome. You say you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Wow. Oh, you just hit the ball. Matt, come on. Don't hit the burrito, bro. That's a great, that was great. Great footballing. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys.